Greetings sewing friends, this is Kim from Dorothy's Daughter. Welcome to my channel. Um, I'd like to say hello to um, all my new subscribers as well. Um, I just appreciate each and every one of you. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, just click the um, subscribe button below and um, also you can tap that little bell if you want to be notified every time that I post a new video. All right, so today is my collaboration with Karina from Lifting Pins and Needles. If you don't know Karina, she is just an amazing person. Um, she's gotten to be uh, a great friend of mine. Um, we chat all the time <laughs> and um, she is a wealth of knowledge. Um, watching her channel, you can't help but grow in your sewing skills. So I highly recommend her channel if you I'm sure you guys probably all heard of her already but if you haven't please go check her out um, she is amazing and um, she has uh, lots of information to share with you and we've kind of made sure we're not duplicating information so um, it's really good to watch us both today all right so we both made the presto tunic from love notions I'm just gonna stand up here so you can kind of see um, I'll put some pictures up as well while I'm talking. Um, I think Karina hacked hers into a dress and I decided to leave mine as a tunic um, because I needed some for fall and winter. Okay, so to get right to it, um, as far as the pattern goes, I enjoyed this pattern. Um, it was not um, difficult, although it would not be a beginner pattern. Um, there's some interesting parts of this placket. And I believe Karina has a bit of a sew along um, with this part um, to show you. So be sure and check that out on her channel. Um, and um, I love that it has buttons. Um, I really, really, really like this pattern a lot. Um, it's a great casual um, top for jeans or dress pants even. Um, I actually went ahead, I opted for the back darts. Um, you, could leave them out or in and I decided I needed all the shaping I could get so uh, once I determined that the blouse you know wasn't going to be a tighter fit or anything I went ahead and put the back darts in so all in all I love the pattern um, the only tricky bit is here um, and um, that is very doable it's not difficult really um, yeah so um, what I want to do though is talk about fabric <laughs> fabric choices for this tunic. Um, there's lots and lots of different fabrics you could make it out of. You could make it out of a quilting cotton or um, a rayon chalet or any kind of fabric that, um, you know, I think a drapey fabric is nice for this one, but you could use a crisp fabric. Um, it's for wovens. Um, I suppose you could use a stable knit, although I don't know why you'd want to. Um, I'm not really sure it would look that great in a stable knit, but um, you could if you wanted to, as long as it was not a real stretchy knit. Um, what I um, decided to use is this um, Georgette chiffon that I, um, or I, I don't know if it's crepe, Georgette or chiffon, but anyway, it's a bit like sewing Kleenex together. <laughs> So I wanted to um, talk to you a little bit about how to handle these kind of fabrics because this is a wonderful choice for this um, pattern. So I wanted to um, just kind of share some tips about working with um, slinky, silky, shiny, slippery, and shedding. <laughs> That's the class of fabric that I'm talking about. Those uh, almost, this one is not sheer, but some of them are. Um, but you know the kind of fabrics that um, shed on you as you're sewing. <laughs> and um, the grain shifts. And oh yes, great fun with this fabric. So um, I'm going to just give you some tips on how I handle these. I've been sewing with this kind of fabric for a long, long time. I'm not afraid of it. Um, and neither should you be if you follow just a few simple tips. All right, so I have um, 12 tips in working with the silky, slinky, shredding. <laughs> what were the other, uh, what was the rest of that alliteration? I don't remember. Anyway, you get the picture. It's like sewing Kleenex together. 
Kleenex might be easier. <laughs> um, anyway, so the very first thing you would want to do is you want to pre-wash your fabric. And before you pre-wash, you want to serge those edges so that you don't, um, it doesn't really start fraying on you. Um, Cause let me find a spot here where it's frayed. This part, this piece isn't too bad, but it can really, look, it can really start fraying on you. Um, so you want to avoid that. So search your ends before you, uh, you don't have to search the salvage edges, but the, the other two edges, go ahead and just run those through the serger if you have one. Um, if you don't, just make sure you wash it on a really delicate cycle. Um, and maybe buy a little bit more than what you need just in case. Um, and then number two tip is to test uh, your iron on the fabric and make sure that there's no shrinking or scorching um, or curling up or anything like that with the iron. Um, you want to test it at uh, uh, when it's fully warmed up because I've, I've done that before. I've tested my iron when it wasn't all the way warmed up and then when I put it on the fabric yeah, don't do that. <laughs> um, make sure it's all the way warmed up. Make sure you give it steam so that you know whether you can or not. Um, and then um, if there's any rippling around the, uh, the impression of the iron where you, that's a sign of shrinkage or um, if there's any scorching or anything like that, then you know that you either have to lower the heat or um, finger press um, and that kind of thing. Um, the third thing is make sure that your fabric's on green when you cut it. Um, and I will, it, it kind of, you know, they kind of shift around um, and you can end up with them not being on green. So I'm going to cut to um, a little demonstration video of how I find the green line and I'll be right back. Okay, make sure that your salvages are over here. And I'm just going to find a couple threads. Let me find some over here. Pattern weight's helpful. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to take a couple threads. Okay, so you want to make sure that you have the crosswise fabric, not the part that looks all frayed all right and you're just going to pull a couple of these it can be hard a little bit hard because it wants to pull the other ones that are fraying if you just pull these right out go all the way across And then once you've pulled those out, hopefully you can see that. Let me zoom in here. Hopefully you can see that visible line right there. Can you see that? And then you'll just cut your fabric along that visible line. And that's how you know where the grain is. Okay. But you want to do that um, in an area where you don't have to cut so that you can, um, you know, obviously you're not going to use this part. So, okay. All right. So number four then is um, you can, when you're cutting, you can put um, a layer of tissue paper down underneath and on top when you cut to keep it from moving around. Um, if that helps, uh, you can definitely do that. You can pin through all those layers. Um, another thing I do, um, in that regard is actually tip number five. I use my rotary cutter, um, for this, but I will also pin, uh, the, uh, pattern to the fabric because it slides around a lot. So, um, I use combination. I don't pin and cut with scissors but I do pin and uh, pin the fabric to the pattern. Um, but you do have to be careful because they also can snag. So you wanna make sure that you use like new pins, um, that they're nice and long and that there's no 
buildup of anything on them and um, not crooked or anything like that. All right, the next thing um, that you would want to do is you could, if uh, another alternative, I guess, to using the tissue paper um, would be to go ahead and starch your whole piece of fabric before you cut it out and that will help it not to slide around as well. Keep in mind though, if you do starch it, you are gonna have to wash it before you can wear it. So um, just a word of the wise there. Um, number seven, if, you're, if you happen to have a straight stitch throat plate, which you'll know that by it being just a tiny hole um, where the needle can go through without it being wide enough for any zigzag or anything, um, you are going to want to um, use that plate if you have one. It will keep the fabric from being pulled. Um, lightweight fabric has a tendency to be pulled down into the throat plate if you're not careful. So um, you might want to use a straight stitch um, throat plate if you have one. The next thing that you would want to do is you would want to use one of these three feet. Um, the walking foot will keep both layers going through simultaneously um, and help it not to slide around. I don't like walking feet. If you watch my video on feet, I'll put that link that up here. You'll see, I just, they get in my way. I, um, it's not my favorite tool, but I do have one and I would use it if I had a very thick layers of quilt or something like that, that I didn't want to slide around. Or maybe, um, if I was putting in, oh, something where I had to have three layers, I might then do that. But, um, I'm not crazy about walking feet. I'm sorry. I know everybody loves them, but I just, it gets in the way of my creativity or something. I don't know what it is, but. Um, there, you can also use a Teflon foot, which is non-stick, so will help the top layer from sticking and not going through. The other thing you can do is use a roller foot, which is what I like to do. Um, that rolls the top layer as it goes through, and it kind of keeps it even with the bottom layer. Not quite as well as a walking foot does, but look at how much less uh, cumbersome that is and easy to snap on and off. So. You know, I guess I just like easy, I don't know, but I use the rolling foot. All right, number nine is your needle. Your needle should be either a 7010 or a 659, um, and it should be a uh, universal needle, not a ballpoint needle, not for these fabrics. Um, it'll pull your fabric right down into the throat plate if you use a ballpoint needle. So make sure you have a new needle and that it's either a 65.9 or a 70.10. Uh, number 10, you wanna use a stitch length of about two and a half um, for all your seams, and you want to just lower your tension slightly so that um, more of the loop is going down and it'll keep it from um, being looking real tight when you sew it. Um, the seam's looking super tight and ripply. That's what that'll achieve. All right, so also uh, any curved seams like necklines, um, anything like that, make sure you stay stitch them. So this pattern didn't call for it, but when you're using these kind of fabrics, I would stay stitch all of the curved edges, make your job a lot easier, um, keep your necklines from stretching out when you go to put the collar on, that kind of thing. So um, definitely stay stitch all your curved seems you're, you're so you saw me use this for jeans in the past um a similar thing the ones i have so hump jumpers come in different varieties this is the one i use for blue jeans it's nice and thick and um, if you watch my video about the jeans i explained how you know i'll put that under there to keep the presser foot level all right but you can also use them on lightweight fabrics. This one is for more of a regular um, fabric. And this one is for your lightweight and your shears. And what that does, it essentially keeps the fabric from being pulled down into the throat plate. 
um, which is why um, a straight stitch plate is great if you have one. I don't happen to have one, but this works just as well. So I'm going to make a pretend seam here on this. Now, if I just started sewing at the end here, it would likely just get pulled right in there. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip that hump jumper in there. Lower the presser foot and so as you can see it didn't get it didn't get sucked up in there at all and um, it usually does fly um, <laughs> but you know it's it's worth it I guess I get my exercise getting up and down to get the thing but um, so that is. Um, that is why we use a hump jumper and um, it's very effective on these lightweight, um, like I said before, this is like sewing Kleenex together, this fabric, so. All right, it is to just take your time. Um, fabrics like this can be tricky um, and they can be frustrating, so um, make sure you like, you know, just go at a, you know, make this a slow sewing project. I know I probably say that about everything, but it's so true. If you're tired and just trying to get something done, that's when you make like 10,000 mistakes. So um, I would say keep it, um, keep it slow pace, uh, low key, and just take your time. And um, you'll be, have a lot of success. I think that once you follow these tips, it's just as easy to sew as quilting cotton. I really do. So anyway, those are my tips. If you'd like to make your own Presto tunic, I'm going to put the link in the description below. And um, Love Notions are wonderful patterns. Um, they're my favorite pattern company, hands down. <laughs> and um, they're very well drafted. And um, I, you know, just can't recommend them highly enough. So, so anyway, this is my Presto tunic. I love it. I will wear it a lot this fall especially um, and if you'd like to make your own there is a link down below um, if you've not sewn love notions before you're about to fall in love because they are wonderful patterns the fit on them is like no other um, and um, the only adjustments I made to the pattern um, were to lower the bust arts I did my narrow shoulder adjustment and if you haven't seen that uh, how I do that you can look at the uh, back in Friday sewing school there are a few videos and you'll see how I do the narrow shoulder adjustment and um, the back darts are optional but I did put them in um, so those are the only adjustments I made um, I did lower the back darts lower the bust darts and narrow shoulder adjustment and that's basically it um, it's very well fitting um, I love it so if you came over from Karina's channel. Thank you so much. And um, I hope that you enjoyed um, the video. And if you haven't seen Karina's yet, please go ahead and click her link. Um, and um, I'll put it down below and go check out her interpretation of the pattern. It's way different. Um, one of the cool things is um, I'm heading into cooler weather while she's heading into warmer weather. So she's done something that's more suitable for that climate. Um, and it's, it's really fun to see how versatile a pattern can be. So I hope you enjoyed. Have a wonderful day. Happy sewing.